Hi everyone. This is the Vincent Van Gogh Scholastic Art Magazine reading. So the first section is drawing with paint. And this quote right here says, they call me the painter. They call me a painter mad if he sees with eyes other than theirs. All right. So we're going to start reading about Vincent Van Gogh, who is our artist right now. In the eyes of the world, Vincent Van Gogh was a complete failure. He had no income, no job, no family. He couldn't even keep the few friends he was able to make. He died a terrible death at the age of 37 after a life of loneliness and suffering. How did this misfit, who dreamed of being a minister like his father, become one of the greatest artists of the modern era? Van Gogh was born in a small Dutch village in 1853. He spent much of his childhood by himself, sketching outdoors. Vincent went to boarding school at age 12, where he was described by his teachers as serious and intelligent, but also as withdrawn and bad-tempered. After finishing school, Vincent entered the family art dealership. Art dealers are people who sell artwork for other people. But he neglected his work and forgot meetings with clients. Hoping he would take more of an interest, his uncle sent him to the Paris office. Vincent did take more of an interest in galleries and museums, but not in business. So he was fired. Vincent then decided to become a preacher. But he spent more time reading and drawing than he did studying for the entrance examination required by the seminary. He failed his exam miserably. By the time he was 27, Vincent had failed as an art dealer, a teacher, and a pastor. He decided to follow the only profession he felt was left to him. He would become an artist. He received support from his younger brother, Theo, now an art dealer. Remember, an art dealer is someone who sells artwork for someone else. In 1886, Van Gogh moved in with his brother in Paris. Paris was the center of the art world, and Vincent's art progressed rapidly. Influenced by the Impressionists, a group of French painters who were challenging traditional ideas, Van Gogh began to develop his own unique style marked by brilliant colors and thick, swirling brushstrokes. Theo put up with Vincent's thoughtless and rude behavior until both brothers agreed Vincent had to leave. In February 1888, he went south to Arles where the light was brighter and the colors more intense. Van Gogh was at the beginning of a career that would last only 10 more years. All right, this quote by Van Gogh says, Gugan is a great artist. I have every confidence that together we shall create wonderful things. Paul Gugan was creating still lifes at the time. All right. So this part is called Friends and Enemies. And in this picture right here is a self-portrait of Van Gogh. All right. When Vincent arrived in Arles, a town in the south of France, he was disappointed. Instead of finding a tropical paradise, the ground was covered with snow. But spring soon arrived and Van Gogh began to work. He used the bright, sunlit days to paint the fields, orchards, gardens, and people that surrounded him. He spent the evenings at the local cafe. In Cafe Terrace at night, the yellow parallel receding lines of the terrace pull the viewer's eyes down the street and into the composition's dark blue center. What they're talking about there is they're talking about how your eyes move through Van Gogh's paintings. That summer, Vincent moved into a small apartment he called the Yellow House. Theo sent him money to furnish it. Vincent had always dreamed of forming an artist colony, a place where artists could live and work together. He had met painter Paul Gugan in Paris and knew Gugan needed a place to live. So he invited him to move in. Happy to have a companion at last, Van Vincent spent the fall preparing for the house for Van Gogh's arrival. The two artists painted together but soon became competitive and began to fight. Finally, Gugan wrote to Theo, Vincent and I cannot live together peacefully. It is, it is imperative that I leave. The situation came to a crisis on the night of December 23rd. Van Gogh heard foot, 
Gugan heard footsteps behind him. When he looked back, he saw Van Gogh following him with a razor in his hand. Vincent turned and went home, and Gugan went to a hotel. When Gugan went back to the yellow house in the morning, he saw a crowd outside. The police told Gugan that Van Gogh had cut off part of his own ear and had given it to someone at the cafe. He then went home to bed, as if nothing had happened. Vincent was taken to the town hospital. Gugan left Arles and never saw Vincent again. When he recovered, Van Gogh painted this self-portrait. The scratchy lines, wide vertical brushstrokes, cool greens, and purples add to the artist's sad, unstable appearance. He has hidden himself in a fur hat and thick coat. The alarming bandage over his right ear contrasts with the bright, cheerful colors of Japanese print in the back. Compare Van Gogh's self-portrait with Gugan's. Both figures are defined by linear outlines, but large solid shapes express Gugan's overbearing personality, while Van Gogh's difficult sensitive nature is captured by lines of varying thicknesses, curvatures, lengths, and textures. Van Gogh was released from the hospital after he realized he couldn't live on his own. So he voluntarily entered an asylum. Vincent was diagnosed as suffering from epileptic fits. He would be fine for a few weeks. He could live and work normally until a fit came on. Then he hallucinated, became violent, and couldn't work at all. And the fits were getting longer and closer together. The great intensity of Van Gogh's works during this period may have to do with his frenzy to create while he was still able to. This is the cafe terrace that was mentioned earlier. So they were talking about how your eyes go down the street. And then, of course, up here, I have it in color on our other slides. So don't worry. And this is a portrait of Gugan. Very different from Van Gogh's portrait. So this section is called Forces of Nature. And the quote by Van Gogh says, I do not create my paintings. I discover them. They must come out of nature. Here's another self-portrait of Van Gogh right here. All right. Towards the end of 1889, life was becoming harder and harder for Vincent. Only in his art could he deal with a world he found overwhelmingly hostile. In spite of his illness, he managed to do his best work during the last 15 months of his life. It was through his art that Van Gogh was able to express the intense connection he felt with nature. He found that he could best capture, I'm sorry, he was able to express the intention. He found that he could best capture na nature's energies through his brush strokes. So line became increasingly important to him. In early landscape, like fishing boats on the beach, Van Gogh used straight lines, black outlines, and relatively empty spaces. In later works, he filled every inch of his canvas with activity. The artist painted irises, while he was confined in the asylum. The tightly packed claustrophobic composition filled with spiked leaves, bright flowers, and chunks of dirt suggests the artist's very restricted life. The cool blues and greens contrast with the warm reds of the earth, and these late paintings Van Gogh paints with a vocabulary of linear marks usually used in drawings. That means he's painting with Basically lines that you would find if you were making a pencil and not a painting. So these lines take the form of scratches, jabs, coils, specks, dots, and dashes. They are woven, elongated, curved, and hatched. His brushstrokes are thick, thin, long, short, wide, or narrow. The Starry Night, one of Van Gogh's most important images is based less on nature and more on the artist's inner feelings and emotions. He has used line, color, distortion, exaggeration, and the direction of his brushstrokes to express his unique concept of nature. A cosmic vision of swirling heavens and towering cypress trees whirls above the tiny geometric forms of the town below. The continuous spirals and sweeping band of light on the horizon Contrast with the short, sharp dashes of the village. The same spiraling blue shapes can be found on one of Van Gogh's last self-portraits. The restlessness line of his clothing echoed the continuing into the swirling brushstrokes of the background. 
1890, Van Gogh left the asylum and put himself in the care of Dr. Gachet. Vincent was lucid enough to realize that Dr. Gachet was as ill and distraught as I am. The artist has expressed this visually by using broken lines to paint portrait of Dr. Gachet. The doctor's instability is further communicated through his troubled expression and the diagonal off-center composition. This is irises right here. He was talking about how they were all claustrophobic. And of course, his boat painting where he was using many different colors and swirls. An especially severe seizure in the spring of 1890 made Van Gogh afraid for the first time to go outside to paint. On the evening of July 27, 1890, he went into the fields and shot himself in the chest. Two days later, with his brother Theo at his bedside, he died. Vincent Van Gogh's entire art career had lasted barely 10 years. All right.